Hey guys, Plev here for another MiG-29 tutorial. And today I'll be teaching you how to operate the number 19 radar fitted in its nose. It's important to note that this is not a search radar. It is a fire control radar. Alongside the radar, you should be using GCI or AWACS bokeh dope calls to vector you towards the target and to help you find where to have the radar look. I will not be covering all aspects of the radar today. This is a very brief, basic introductory lesson. Place your WCS mode into the radar master mode. An important switch to note while you're here is the missile prepare switch. This will let you, if you set it to the manual position, override the launch authorized requirement for your missiles. Radar compensation switch will determine whether or not your radar is stabilized on the horizon. To tell your aircraft what altitude to look at with the radar, use the Delta H or radar elevation knob. This sets the difference in height in meters to your target. Well, that's gonna be kilometers, but still. As you move your radar elevation up or down on your HUD repeater, you'll see on the right side an indication that moves and shows you said elevation. You can move the scan of your IRST or radar left or right with the zone switch, left, center, and right. You'll see on our HUD, now that we've moved it to the right, that the scan zone that we're using is indicated on the HUD. The track while fly switch will enable the radar to track multiple targets simultaneously while scanning for new ones. Unlike a regular TWS system, however, the aircraft cannot fire on multiple targets because we have no Fox 3s. With the switch flipped up, TWF will automatically identify the highest threat target and move the box of the TDC on your HUD over that target. The switch also lets you define whether you're targeting a frontal hemisphere target or a rear hemisphere target. Four, four. Your radar mode select knob has the automatic mode on its farthest left, close combat mode to the right of that, head on, and pursuit modes. Do note that radar close combat mode initiates a vertical scan and close combat mode on the main WCS knob indicates an IRST vertical scan. Head-on mode is best for incoming targets, giving you about 140 kilometer max detection range. Pursuit mode is best for targets that you are trailing, that are heading away from you, with a cold aspect um, out to about 30 kilometers. Auto mode, all the way to the left, not to be confused with close combat, auto will interleave the head-on and pursuit modes. Before we do anything, I'd like to note that you do not set the range on this radar. Range is displayed on the vertical axis, while azimuth represents offset to the left or right. When in a radar mode, you will have RL displayed on the left-hand side of your HUD. You will also have the bar the radar or IRST is currently searching overlaid in the bottom right of your HUD repeater. Unknown or hostile targets will look like a single dotted line on your HUD. Friendly aircraft will, however, appear as a double line of dots. IFF is done automatically. This is a good contrast between the two right here. In a radar search mode, contacts will appear as dots on your HUD and on your HUD repeater. You can slew your TDC cursor around with TDC slew. However, to lock a target, which we'll do later, you'll hold down your NWS key. That's gonna be the lock on slash NWS button depress. To break lock, you'll press the break lock button. Jamming, however, will cause something like the following I've overlaid on your screen to occur. We will talk in a separate video about how to deal with this. If we set the radar illumination switch to off, you'll notice that RL has disappeared from our HUD. If we switch it back to illuminate and move our mode select to close combat, you will see the HUD has entered a vertical scan with RL on the left hand side of the HUD, indicating this is a radar vertical scan. We can place the target within this, these two vertical bars and hold the NWS slash lock on button. Let's go back to auto mode and let's turn back on our radar. Now we can see that our aircraft has returned to its regular radar search mode. 
to enable dual tracking of your target with both your radar and your IRST system in radar mode, flip on the co-op switch. This makes you almost unnotchable as if your target gets into the notch, the IRST will continue to track and guide the radar off the target. One important consideration though with the IRST that I cannot overlook in this radar tutorial is that if your illuminate switch is switched down to the dummy position, then your radar will still be used for ranging if you're using the IRST as an acquisition source. Let's go ahead and do a mock engagement using the R27ER semi-active air-to-air missile. Let's go ahead and engage our target. I'm gonna set my WCS mode to radar and I'm gonna set the radar mode to head-on. Let's go ahead and lock this target. I'm gonna TDC slew over him and I'm gonna hold the nose wheel steering slash lock command. This will give me an indication for the maximum range of my currently selected missile, another indication for the minimum range of my currently selected missile, and when we're within parameters to fire, launch authorized. The arrow down here indicates the target's current heading, and the circle gives us steering to intercept our target. We're almost within max range. Using the station select switch, we can decide if we're going to use our outboard stations or inboard stations. We now have launch authorized. I'm going to go ahead and pickle, holding it. And let's see how it does. may follow up with another shot just because that was at the edge of our envelope. And I think we'll do that just about now. Oh, that was that first missile hit. Second is not tracking. Oh, it is tracking. Fantastic. Launch, launch. That's another hit. We can break lock with our break lock button. All right, guys, that's all for today. Stay tuned for more videos covering more advanced features of the radar, like K-Mod. Also, stay tuned for a video which will cover the IRST in greater depth. And like always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if I've helped you out. Plev, out.